Thank you, Pierre, for your kind words and introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And it is my pleasure to join you this evening, albeit via video link, at the opening of the IMI EMA FDA Regulatory Science Meeting, where you will be discussing the future of IMI funded research. As you are aware, at EMA, we believe that public private partnership, and IMI in particular, have the potential for creating a step change in medicine's innovation. We have been following the Innovative Medicine Initiative with interest from its inception. This is an interesting idea. Pharmaceutical companies who usually compete work together and share intelligence with researchers from across Europe. This is part funded by the European Commission and importantly, therefore, the European taxpayer. Whether this big idea has delivered, it remains an important question. And this was reflected again in last week's message from EU ministers when they suggested that public funding for IMI needs either to be capped or phased out. However, it is quite clear that EU27 has the ambition to set out a world-leading research and innovation agenda. So, at EMA, we ask ourselves, how can we ensure the maximum impact of IMI funding initiative for European patients? Has it delivered? How can we sure it will deliver better? Why we are seeing so few IMI projects coming to EMA for advice on qualification on novel methodology or qualification biomarket? With the introduction of Think Big initiative, and the opportunity to discuss in this meeting, this year's summit is quite different from previous one. I recognize the present summit could signal a change of tack. I hope we will be increasingly seeing more IMI projects coming for assessment at EMA. And I know my colleagues from EMA and the committee chairs are motivated to join the discussion tomorrow to help shape the research agenda in the important areas such as antimicrobial resistance, immunology, clinical trials, regulatory pathway, big data and then digital health. We are also keen to think bigger and look at other areas or connection within these. We very clearly see that new development paradigms are progressing with unprecedented speed. Let me take the subject of 3D printing as one example of where Research and technology meet when there is a market opportunity, sometime at unexpected moments and places. The example I have in mind comprises an automated process with minimal operating cost and which has the potential to print out within a short time frame personalized medication. Potential application of 3D printing are one of the emerging trends we see for medicines, for drug devices, combination for tissues and cells, or even entire organs, both as transplant and advanced therapies. With this, the three printed tablet is a reality. It is a welcome reality expected to benefit patients, but one that poses interesting challenges for regulators. I foresee a shift from treatment of symptoms to potentially curative medicines, which will require entirely new approaches to both benefit risk assessment and value assessment, as well as new approaches to payment and financing. And all this in a context of constraints that are driving the strategic allocation of resources. I foresee the need to build the new competencies both for regulators to evaluate increasingly complex products and for public health systems to deliver increasingly complex treatments to patients. And to build the new expertise, regulators need to reach out many stakeholders and interact with new players outside the health arena. What we see in Europe sometimes with this uh, complexity is that unfortunately very innovative products or methodologies may fall between the cracks of the range of national European regulation around medicines, devices, 
selling tissues, manufacturing, data privacy, and so far and so forth. We need to ensure the regulatory system is sufficiently agile to accommodate regulatory evaluation and assessment of innovative medicines. In order to promote public health in the current environment, we can no longer be just regulators. We need to take a new role at the crossroad between science and national healthcare systems. We need to become a catalyst or enabler for science to be translated into patient-centered healthcare and to fit into reality of healthcare system today and in the future. Our increasingly structured involvement in EU-funded regulatory science projects, our increased and more structured involvement with academia, our efforts to support advanced therapies, research and development, are examples that reflect how we embrace this changing role. This can also be seen through the increasing dialogue in our Innovation Task Force, where we see more novel methodologies and biomarkers coming for qualification advice. However, because of our desire to maximize impact, we really want to see even more of the IMI outputs making into public domain. This is why, in your design of project, we ask you to ensure that applicants are encouraged to come and share with us their intelligence and their plans for innovative medicine development. We find not only that it educates, uh, it educates us, but also that we can help ensure the right regulatory interaction at the right time to help enhance impact for patients. I foresee that it is not too distant future we will be unable to distinguish what is a medicine, what is a device, what is a transplant. We need to develop a much more modern approach to our benefit-risk assessment and life cycle approach to medicines evaluation. To reach our ultimate goal, we need a reflection on regulatory science strategy. A regulatory science strategy should draw from a variety of sources within our regulatory network and from the experience and the use of developers, academia and the industry, and not only pharma industry. It should utilize a purposefully collaborative approach with continuous feeding into and feeding from horizon scanning activities, detecting triaging information and assessing it for the impact on European public health and the impact on our own workload. Our strategy reflects the need to adapt and to be sufficiently agile. Our activities and output range from development of guidelines to regular discussion with the European Commission in order to make sure that the regulatory framework is interpreted and hopefully adapted in line with the evolution of science. We are leveraging collaboration at the European and, and international level with our partners, ensuring stakeholders are engaged to avoid self referential outcome and identifying hot spots in the current regulatory science discussion. Present initiatives include our EU Innovation Network, where we are working with innovation offices across Europe to support capacity building shared learning and consensus building, aiming to achieve a more coherent and cohesive approach across Europe. Other initiatives include PRIME and other opportunities for early dialogue, but also our systematic involvement in IMI by represent representation in the scientific committee, in the projects by members of our committees and working parties, involvement in our research program and importantly our input into today and tomorrow's regulatory summit. Each and every one of us has given a lot of thought to the topics to be discussed and we will uh, be tackling them from different perspectives and with different backgrounds. Ultimately what we have in common is that we wish EU public resources to be invested to maximize impact for patients.
Tomorrow you will be discussing how best to do that in four areas of a major importance in public health. To me, that is an opportunity. It's also a massive responsibility. We are all for think and for big. Let's hope that we will leave this summit with the feeling that this ambitious goal is at least within striking distance. I wish you a very fruitful, productive and inspiring meeting.